Greetings everyone, Strategic Sage here with more AI War 2. We haven't done this game in quite a while on the channel. And that hiatus is largely due to the fact that there's been a big rebalancing effort that's gone in. The core of the game is still the same, but a lot of the way it plays out is much different. And so, a lot of the advice I've given in the past on AI War 2 really doesn't fit. We're just going to take a step back here, reset, do a tutorial type run, and I'm aiming to help a couple different groups of players with this. One is that if you're totally new to the game, check out the link in the description below for the beginner walkthrough. But I would only recommend the first half dozen or so episodes of that. Get the basic idea of the resources and structure of the game. A lot of that stuff, the rest of it, the concepts videos I've done trying to give a little bit higher level advice. You can throw most of that stuff out the window now. It just doesn't apply anymore. And so if you're familiar with the game but haven't been paying super close attention to the beta it's kind of a culture shock that you might be in for here so hopefully in your case it will also help to see all the new things as well I have none of the expansions enabled we're gonna go with a basic setup just the default options see once again what is with the new dynamic what's gonna be the new baseline experience for AI War 2 so for our map, we're just going to do you know, the usual realistic, nothing special here, Kahuna's Real Stars, standard 80 planets, and, you know, random seed. And then for our empire, the starting fleets are not starting options. More starting options has been implemented into the core game, so there's more choices here. But we can also randomize them now. So I'm just going to go with random for our starting fleet. You get two battle stations now, random for both of those. Random support fleet, just give me whatever. And on the AI, difficulty 7. Now we've got new numbers here describing exactly what each of the different difficulties do. But difficulty 7 is the baseline. You know, the AI has all of its tricks available to it, but it doesn't have hugely ramped up economy like it does on the higher difficulties. You know, generally speaking, there's the saying, the game starts at difficulty 7, the real game starts. The AI is not intentionally holding itself back at that stage. Okay, so normal anticipatory for Warden, Intelligent Predator for Hunter, you know, the middle of the road options there. And there are more options that you can explore. We're not going to do a bunch of these, but I'm just going to note really quickly that there are, for example, some roguelike additions. And I am going to have the beacons on, which I normally don't do. I'll even use those most likely. And I am going to have, for example, the Tsunami CPA. This is all baseline stuff. You know, the, the way that it plays out of the box as best I can. So that if you are new, I'm not throwing a bunch of different complications at you here. So, let's take a look at what it has for us. Here's our initial starting area. And if you're particularly sharp-eyed, you'll already notice some things that are different. One, what on earth is this? Well, this is a TSS, Turret Schematic Server. They've replaced the GCAs, and we'll, they work differently. We'll get into how that works. The ARS has also worked differently. We have a nearby officer fleet. In this case, the Rorkal Hagira, which I've not used in quite a while. We are going to definitely get that. So we could, that's an option. We could go here first. We're not going to, but we could. And notice this is a Mark III. We got Murdoch as a Mark IV nearby. The galaxy generation is a little bit different in that regard as well. But what we're going to do is the typical strategy where we're going to defend first, and then we're going to go after the closest nearby standard fleet, which is this one right here. And this has Spiders, iBots, Tesla Corvettes. We are looking at Subterfuge, Subterfuge, and Splash. And if we look at our tech categories before we get set up here, some of them have changed. There's a few ships that have been moved around. There's even a new ship, an ambush carrier frigate. The ambush carrier gets a frigate. We have things like core and exotic. They're essentially renamed and just tweaked a little bit to try to make them more intuitive in terms of what the ships do in those particular categories and move some ships around that maybe they thought fit a little bit better. But it's the same basic tech structure here. How it works out in practice, though, is much different. Uh, Strikecraft have no shields. 
None whatsoever. But they do, they have additional hull to compensate. And they mark up in power faster. It's instead of the way it used to be where, you know, high mark anything is better than a low mark anything else. Now you get up to about mark four, you stop increasing in number, but they will still increase in power beyond that. It's much more viable to have, say, four or five different techs up at level four as opposed to one or two at level seven. Then the other thing is things like frigates and engineers and turrets. They don't increase in cap at all when you mark them up. They get better, but you don't get more of them. So that's very important to keep in mind as well. So all of that whole, you know, the meta side of it, what's the best strategy is much different. Same thing with the economy. I always said before, you know, get a couple levels of engineering, get your cloaked engineers. Um, I have sort of evolved into that being my strategy. Leave the metal alone, maybe one level in your command station, you'll get more metal later. You know, you want the additional engineers, which you don't get now because the cap stays the same. And you, and you, you can see that here. We're just going to increase their abilities. We're not actually going to get more of them. And so you have so many more engineers at the beginning, you're going to spend metal faster. You've got more stuff you can build. If you look at the numbers, you've got more turrets that you can build, especially with the battle stations. You've got more defenses. It's 16 tractor arrays immediately. So with that in place, you have to be careful because you can't spend everything and you're going to spend more quickly. So what I actually want to do is I'm going to grab a metal. It's probably the only upgrade of that I'll do, but I do want to grab one. And then I'm also going to jump into my command station and do a couple of direct upgrades here to improve everything on the planet, boosting the early economy, also boosting my early defenses. And I'm going to be a little more cautious in this run, partly because it is a tutorial run, and partly because, you know, we're diving into a new paradigm here, a new version of the game. A lot of things are different. Let's be cautious first, walk before you run, perhaps evolve more aggressive strategies later. So if we look at our defenses here, we can build additional force fields now up to three of them but i am definitely going to go ahead and throw at least one more up here i think having a second force field on a planet is a big difference because one can repair while the other one is defending sort of that you know force field juggling thing that you do and then let's put up our only the turrets for the planet itself we won't do the battle station ones yet and we do want to put the turrets between the enemy wormholes and our command station so that enemy ships have to fly through their range in order to attack us. So if we put the pike in each direction, except for New Hogan, because that's where we're going to attack and get that fleet. So we'll allow our mobile forces to deal with any defense that we might have coming in that direction. And then let's get our tachyon arrays up, even though they are momentarily bugged in this particular version of the game, but they should be, I imagine that's probably going to be fixed within a day or two. That'll be a, a minor beta issue. And tachyon arrays out here. And I definitely also want to go around with my tractors. Need to be just outside of that to match the range. And of course, the Z key is what you use to get that view of what the range of the other items is control as you can see in the upper right to place five of these at a time okay so we're pretty happy with all of that but let's also do some i have, do have the watchman frigates automated but not the assault frigates for the station keepers the ones that have to stay on this planet and the reason i did it that way is because i do not want you know to spend all the extra energy i do think research wise they have a station keepers tech now and I think this is a no-brainer to me to spend 250 research on this. It's so cheap for the first level. But then 1250, so maybe not. I think it will, we'll just stop there. And then I want to invest in some other weapons techs. And we had the subterfuge and the splash nearby for that other fleet. And our current fleet that we have in here, our starting one, is Velociraptors Ambush. The raid daggers, piercing, and then more raid for the raid frigates. So let's definitely bump a couple levels into raid. And then we're going to want to do one piercing. 
One ambush. It'll be 2,500, so I'll throw up a splash. And we'll do more subterfuge after we take over the next area. Now, one of the reasons I'm not concerned about spending a bunch of science initially is that another new feature is retrieving spent science. You can literally respec or forget your tech upgrades. Now, there is a hacking cost for doing it, but I could revert any of these and get the science back. And there's this little tooltip explanation there. So, look at all this. Blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I'm just going to hold this here for now for a few seconds. Then I'm going to scale down. And if you want to read that on your own, go right ahead. But essentially, that explains sort of the reasoning behind and all of that. But it does allow you to invest in a, say, an early game strategy, and then later in the mid game or late game, you can, for a moderate cost, revert those changes and then have a different strategy then. It makes you more flexible with your science. And the idea behind it was, you know, AI progress is something that you, you know, once you've captured an enemy planet, you can't decide to uncapture it and get that AI progress back. Uh, same thing with hacking. You spend it, it's gone. And it was felt that science was, you know, promoting too much analysis paralysis, and some people weren't really enjoying the fact of feeling paralyzed. They didn't want to screw up with their early science investments. I was not in that mode, at least not very much, but I understand, like, the thought behind it, at least. So now we just need to get all this built. And this is going to take a bit of time. And then we're going to just move our one fleet. I'm going to leave the battle stations here. But as our engineers build up, and they're going to set up all the Watchmen frigates, we're going to see our metal, you know, is taking quite a hit here now. Science coming in, up there and hacking. There are also new hacking options that are even available to us this early. For example, if we take a look, Let's grab one of our battle stations. We can change form to ensnare, gravitic, revealer, shield wall. You don't like the battle stations you picked initially? Switch it to something else. You can change the form of your, you know, support factories. Again, you can change the form of your transports. Again, using more hacking. There's a ton of new hacking options in the game. You'll never be bored and not know what to do with hacking anymore. Switch to Agile, switch to Cloaked. The high capacity transport is new. You can only use it with a few ship lines, but it will double the capacity of them. And you can see it's a significant hacking cost in order to do that. We happen to have an Agile one. And so we're going to just stick with that as it is. So, let's see. How are we doing on our fleet? Yeah, we're still building it up. Once it's all the way up, though, we're going to charge our way into New Hogan. And into New Hogan we go. A few ships coming out of the command station. We've got some spiders down here. So I want to deal with those. Of course, not too much of a problem on a Mark I planet. But I'd still rather have them gone than slowing us down. Okay, so as soon as we take this over, we're going to take a look at some of the new things with command stations. But we've got to get rid of all the enemies first. Okay, we've explored more. We've got the lore of the Hunter Fleet, which... You know, just lets us know everything that they do. And they're going to wipe out these mines revealed since the command station is down. But the economic command, you can see defensive structure cap only 25%. Of course, and there's increased metal storage as well. But the basic idea that, you know, economic is better for your economy, doesn't do much militarily, is intact. Just the balance of it has changed. Logistical, they still have the speed bonus. Notice they watch all planets within two hops, so they have 
an increased scouting range. Metal storage is the best as well. Energy is middling, and then defensive structure cap of about half, 48%. And the military command gives you the, you know, planetary attack modifier, defensive structure cap, 133%. So the military, like higher difficulties, people are using a lot more military these days, military economic than just all logistics like before. I'm going to start out with logistics, but worth keeping all of that in mind and the military do in fact scout all planets within one hop of them but the economics don't so before the militaries didn't have any you know scouting recon ability so a lot different and of course almost no metal storage very little energy production for the military command so you do need to support them with econs if you're going to use them Okay, so we're going to get a logistic. We're going to put it basically on top of this wormhole. Again, we want to defend the access point into our homeworld. And let's throw in our support to build it up faster. See our metal starting to rebound, but that's not going to be that way for long. Okay, now we have actually... We've got this here, but there's something new with these as well. A little bit of cheese that you can't do anymore. If you notice, can't swap to and from, can't swap the ship lines out when the flagship has not been fully claimed. And that's because they're now allowing you to, if you capture a planet with golems in it, you can pause the golem construction and not claim the golem at all and not get the AI progress from it. Which, I mean, I understand the why, but I wish that wasn't a thing. But if you had that happen with, say, for example, an officer fleet, then you could what you could do is you could just not build the officer fleet, but then still take the ship lines off of it. And so that would be very cheaty. And so that's why they put that bit in. I just use it to swap them off the fleet to boost my early fleet buildup a little bit before I would actually claim it. And that's not a thing you can do anymore either. So, we're just going to pull these all off. We want to put these all on the main fleet for now. And then you are going to go back to the wormhole. Because, if we take a look at our tooltip here, I just need to get it functioning properly. There we go. Now, notice... It says in the middle they're off 1.1 times metal and energy produced at this planet once it's been at this planet and non crippled for at least 300 more seconds in other words the idle transports that you have you can't build custom ones anymore but there's a little bit more of a strategy in terms of how you're going to use your transports because the more spare ones you have around you can just stash them in this case on my home world i think that's always going to be pretty much the best place for it and it'll actually give you a passive boost to your economy, 10% each one. So imagine if you had like five transports in there, boosting that by 50%. That would be pretty nice. And look at our force field generators. We've got six of them. Now, I'm, all, I'm not going to put up six. I'm just going to throw up two on every planet to start. We're just going to deal with that. But then we also have some new things, including these. These are spies. So they give you visibility on enemy planets. And this is another element of the new scouting, because we're not talking about scouting out further where we haven't explored. That still happens by capturing command stations, or by doing, you know, we still have the option we can do the hack explorers there, but only on the ones that are adjacent to plants you've already explored. We're talking about getting vision on the ones that we already have explored but aren't currently being watched, like, say, this one over here. And so the spies will give you a good way to do that instead of trying to send out, you know, empty transports or other things to the various places. You know, we're trying to find where the warden and hunter are. They're very useful for that. And I think I like how all of that works. I don't want the spies in place yet, but we will be getting them eventually. And it does reduce a bit of fiddliness. I think it's a pretty good solution to that aspect of the game. So now you can see again, even the metal upgrades we've done, we're going to be hitting a metal crunch here. 
we're going to need to build up, first of all, and I'm going to just continue going on with my pikes only. So we're going to throw them. They can reach almost to these wormholes in here. I'm pretty happy with them. So you can go ahead and go there. But we're also, you know, I mean, we're almost out of metal. This is coming up. So let's go ahead and we're going to want to boost that subterfuge because we got those. And then once we get enough science, we should have enough to boost it again. And our fleet, yeah, we're out of metal. But our fleet is already at about 30 strength and it's going to go up higher. And we've still got the battle stations we could use if we wanted, but again, it just it's a case of metal. Now, while that is going up, we can take a look at what we want to do next. We've got a bunch of hacking. I'm definitely going to want to hack the outguard. Because I always like getting the outguard as quickly as possible. The reason for that is they scale up how many of them are available with your AI progress going up. So the earlier you get them, the higher that number is going to get for you. And then there's another out guard here. We've got a data center down here. Those are unchanged. They're pretty much the same as they are. Citadels are stronger than they used to be, mostly because of the increased turret count, but they're also faster. They're not as common, but there's usually a couple of them laying around. And I do like the uh, Drainer Citadel. Vampirism is nice. So I may want to get this. The distribution nodes are different. You can see AI progress is now plus three instead of the plus one. You get 1,200 science and 35 hacking. They're still worth it. Um, but basically a little more AI progress and a little more resources that you get out of those as well. And so we got another troop accelerator. This is a fleet that I'm going to want. Um, the agravic pods are excellent for taking down large ships since they are cloaked and they're good at knocking out things with powerful engines. So I'm probably going to want that, but this is Mark V, so that's going to wait. And then this one, Pulsar Tanks. We've got Ambush Carrier Frigates, so they are in this game. Assault Frigates, Tritium Sniper Frigates. You can see quite a lot of larger ships there. Probably, maybe going to want that. We'll see. So, but I think next I want to clear out Murdoch. And this is worth looking at. Oh, we're up and positive in metal here. So, we can always bring in the battle stations we have trouble with. I don't think we will this early in the game. This difficulty, we can probably handle it. I'm going to go ahead and hack. And we're going to get this outguard beacon. And notice you have this hack to increase the range also of our logistical commands, you know, recon area, if we wanted. And you can increase it from two to four. So if you really want just a massive scouting area, that is a possibility. Let's go ahead, though, and get this one done. We're just waiting for... There we go. We got some initial spawns going. And, of course, the response from the outguard hack is backloaded. It's going to be worse at the end than it is at the beginning. But I do not expect any major issues here. And this thing definitely wants to throw sniper type stuff at us and gunboats. But our fleet is, is hanging out. It's just a matter of whether it can kill them fast enough. Here's the new icon for you're being attacked. Some of these are, are new, you know, just graphically. And about 30 seconds left. They are gradually spawning faster than we can kill them. But I don't think it's going to be a major concern. There we go. We'll accept that boost to our AI progress. Bingo. Okay, so our outguard. We have Lobar the Wolf. And the Xenophon. We'll go on any planet. This will go only on AI, so we've got a bit of a mix there. But I generally like the attacking 
outguard more than the defensive outguard, but I do like to have some like the Xenophon that will go anywhere. So next. Well, I want to clear out the Murdoch 4 here. And for those who aren't that familiar, look at the alert level there. High readiness. Whereas, for example, here is lowest readiness. And of course, all the ones that are adjacent to you are going to have high readiness. And that means that they're going to get reinforcements at a higher rate. And having a Mark IV planet get reinforcements at a higher rate is just going to cause me problems later. So I would prefer not to let it build up and build up. I just want to cleanse it now. I don't mind their reinforcements get dividing up in like Mark II, Mark II, Mark I, even Mark III is fine. Early game, you know, Mark IV is sort of my line as to when I think it's a problem. And that's something that you can... I mean, it's going to depend on the player. But I'm going to move you back in here. Always want to have the support fleet on a planet that's adjacent to where I'm going to attack. So that I do not have any further complications. And meanwhile, in here, we've got enough energy now. I want to throw up the gravity gens. And let's see, we'll put a couple in each direction. We're doing fine on energy for the moment. I just want to make sure it stays that way. By the way, I talked about the tachyons earlier. That's actually already been fixed on their internal build. So as soon as the next beta patch comes out, tachyons not working should not even be an issue anymore. And I shouldn't need a ton of these. I'm just going to throw a couple in each side. One over here. Just enough to slow everybody down if we get hit until we can deal with it later. And let's also just put, just for fun, a few paralysis minefields. I like to just sort of... I don't know what the right you know, strategy is going to be once I get used to it. But I just want to put some things out. And then allow them to... You know, I can scale it up over time rather than just throwing everything I have everywhere and running myself low on energy. That's probably not the most advisable scenario. So let's hop into Murdoch. Yeah, we've got, okay, a Sabo hitting us right away. Let's go ahead and switch to attack move. There we go. It's always best to look before you leap, but I didn't actually do that. But we're strong enough in here that we're just, again, we're going to clean everything. And, of course, knocking out the guard posts. Some people use the term neutering. I don't prefer that. I prefer to just say clearing them out. And here comes our first wave. And this is a little bigger than usual for difficulty 7 and at 40 AI progress. The waves have increased in frequency and size. So we're just going to come back here and it becomes a little bit of a chess match if you're playing on a challenging difficulty early in the game because you know, they're going to come over here. Okay. You really have to ask yourself, you know, like how much my finances am I going to devote to defense versus attack? Because unless you're building a bunch of military command stations, you're going to need help from the fleet. And of course, this is not of a size that's going to concern us. But AI progress will go higher, and we will have more problems going forward. As it is, not really an issue. So as we clean this up, they take a little bit of time. we got vanguards and pulsar tanks which are basically just tanky and annoying types of ships. But we have cleaned all that up. They already have 21 threat, so that's going to continue growing. But Murdoch is no longer going to reinforce. Um, we are going to want this outguard. I think, I think actually this outguard and this data center are my next targets here. Let's see if we can get that, uh, that outguard out of the way. Which one is it going to be? Spire Archivist is defensive, and Hereward the Wake, I don't remember what that one does. Okay, 
Let's move our support fleet next door. And I think our fleet by itself should continue to be sufficient here, particularly if I grab that other subterfuge boost. There we go. And a Mark 1 planet should not, or Mark 2, excuse me, should not cause me any problems really here. So there should be a quick, oh, we got some Warden. They're starting to make their presence felt. But this should still be a short operation. I hope it's going to be a short operation. And having two Outguard beacons spawn close to your home world, that's really good fortune for me. So that I'll be able to get those extra reinforcements. And for those who have seen me play before, I mean, this is not going to come as a surprise to you. But I really like the Outguard. They're very powerful, very flexible. Like Your ability to just, when you run into trouble, you're having trouble getting through a system or an attack is damaging you more than you want it to, you just having that easy button essentially to push. I have suggested, and it hasn't been done, but the outguard are, in my opinion, unbalanced. They're too cheap at 10 AI progress. I think you should start at 25 and then tweak from there because they're so effective in virtually any type of game. But as long as they stay, and I, I think they're also underused by a lot of players. Like, oh, I don't want to boost my AI progress, but their usefulness is so much better. Like if you're doing a super low AI progress run and that can be fun to do, then no, don't, don't, don't grab the out guard. But pretty much anything other than that, and they're going to be useful to the point of, you know, giving you more than that 10 AI progress is going to hurt you. Maybe not on super high difficulties either, but, you know, if you're not at the extremes, if you're in a more typical type of game, still very powerful, still very much want to do that. And we are, okay, about 20 seconds away. We're still, you know, th this is actually a fight that I'm probably going to want, if I want to do any more severe hacks than this, I'm now going to want to start involving, you know, the battle stations and building some turrets, etc. Because we're going to clean this, but we couldn't go much further without actually boosting our own combat power. Of course, we could also just get more ships. There's lots of things we can do to boost our capabilities. Oh, here comes the Warden. So they're going to come in and say hello as well. This is actually good for me. Because it just means that I get to kill some Warden. And, you know, stop them from ramping up as much as they might otherwise do. And let's see, we've got MLRS Guardians. And, oh, a Tathwita. Didn't notice that. But we cleaned it up. Okay, so that's basically the first 20 minutes of our run. And I'm definitely going to want to hit this data center next. And then, you know, that'll keep us from getting things too high. I'm going to want to hit this distribution node. And then I'm going to want to also definitely get this right here, this Rorkal Hagira arc. And then after that, I'm not sure. But I will reveal more scouting after this is done. I can take a look at some of these other hacks, ARS, the TSS, etc., Perhaps consider the Citadel or advancing to some of these fleets or what else we might want to do. That will be coming up next time. So I hope you're enjoying this so far. I probably am going to miss some things or misstate some things with all the new things going on here. If you have any questions, please throw them at. Because if you have a question about something, I'm sure somebody else does too. You know, if I'm wrong about something, please correct me. And I will try to correct that in the next video. Otherwise, thanks for watching. More AI War 2 coming up soon.